Netflix has a documentary about the Fire Fest. And it might be called like Fire, the party that never happened, the greatest party that never happened, something like that. But you can just type in Fire. It's F Y R E. And you might remember this in the news. It was this huge music festival that was supposed to happen in the Bahama. It was really high end, expensive, a lot of younger, rich people going out to it. And it was an absolute disaster. Like people didn't have food, water, places to sleep. Um, it, the, the show, the entire event got canceled during the first night. So no bands ever went on stage. Um, and the guy that, that created it is, is been convicted for fraud, um, is going to be going to jail, uh, if he's not already in prison. Um, huge, huge story. It was from like two years ago. But the documentary on it's very, very interesting. It's hard to stop watching it. Um, I'm just telling you if you if you're hard up for stuff to watch on Netflix, this is probably not one I'll talk about on the main channel because uh, there's not enough documentaries I haven't already talked about to do like a top ten list. This would be one of them. It's very, very good. They leave some unanswered questions because I think they didn't have all the information by the time they they finished editing it and. One of the companies involved with the marketing for the event also created it, so there's some holes in who's culpable for, for really a disaster. Like somebody, some people could have been really hurt um, during this thing. I mean, it, it, it's, it's bad news, but it's just a, man, is it a crazy story. Like we could not stop, me and my wife, we could not stop watching it. Um, I did, on the main channel this past week, I did a list of the... Uh, best weird movies on Netflix, and uh, that, that went well. That got a lot of views. I was happy with the, the engagement you guys gave me on that. But one I said I was going to watch was Radius. I watched it, uh, and I recommend it. I didn't love this one, but I, I guess I'll tell you why. This will be like a little review of Radius right here on the podcast. Um, really cool concept. Uh, really, and this is just a synopsis. It's not a spoiler. You find this, you find out what's going on in the first like ten minutes. But it's about a guy who, you know, he's got amnesia. He like wakes up in a car accident. You know, the first like frame of the movie. And every person and thing, living thing, animal, that comes within a certain radius of him, which I've, they don't measure it. I, he uses a string. It looks like it's about fifty feet. Um, so it's a pretty big radius, but anybody that enters that immediately, their eyes go white, they die. Just, I mean, they just drop dead right at the edge of this radius all the way around them. Um, really cool concept. When you start thinking of like all the stuff, like where that, that could go, it's really cool. But then something happens and I won't spoil that here that sort of negates that concept for a good portion of the movie uh, and I get it. I mean, it's done on a low budget. They can't, you know, there's only so many special effects they could cram in. But man, I would love to see like another crack at this with more money and just in a different, like a sequel where the same thing happens, but to somebody else in a different part of the world and it's a different chain of events. Because man, that concept, who, I mean, the thing is, nobody can get within 50 feet of you. Like, how do you stop somebody reasonably? Like, the police want to come question you. Cause some, cause dead bodies are showing up in your neighborhood. They can't, how are you going to stop them from coming 50 feet away from you? Even if you explain, it's not going to work. Nobody's going to believe that. Um, it's a pretty, pretty wild concept. I liked it. And the movie was good enough. Like I didn't have a problem with the movie other than the fact that I wanted more out of it. But, uh, if that sounds cool to you, definitely check that out. Widows, uh, is... Uh, the latest movie from director Steve McQueen. And this movie got mixed reviews. And I think the only reason why is because he's such a good director. People were expecting more. This is sort of a like boilerplate thriller that's got some directing style and flair to it. Like it's a little higher end, but it's kind of well below where his other work is. He did 12 Years a Slave. He did two movies with Michael Fassbender. One is called Shame where Fassbender plays a sex addict. That movie is intense. That movie is pretty incredible. Uh, and then he did one, another one, an early Michael Fassbender one. I, I want to say he's one of the directors that discovered him as an actor. But it's called Hunger. 
It's about some, uh, I believe, IRA agents in Ireland uh, going on a hunger strike in prison. Uh, that one's very, very good. Very, very unique director. Um, anyway, I, I was looking forward to this one. Then it got mixed reviews, so I slept on it till I could rent it. It's currently available to rent uh, on video on demand. It's probably in your red box. But it's a cool thriller. Liam Neeson's in this one. Opening shot of the movie. He's got his tongue down Viola Davis's throat. So in a week of Liam Neeson being labeled as a racist all over the internet, I rent this movie. Opening shot, he's in bed with his, you know, his wife in the movie, Viola Davis. Just, I mean, more tongue than I've seen in a movie, uh, maybe ever. Um, so that was funny. Uh, but he's, the synopsis, I try not to say anything that's not in the trailers. The synopsis is, he's, um, he's a criminal, and uh, a heist goes wrong. Him and all his, his partners are killed in the beginning of the movie. And then the widows uh, now owe somebody a lot of money, owe their husband's debt. And they need to pull off a heist in order to pay this debt. So, cool premise. Um, Viola Davis is in it. God, I can't remember the other actress, the blonde actress. She's she's really good. She's super tall, um, which which I'm into. I, my, I don't know that I've ever said uh, on the show, but I'll say it now because she's going to be on soon. Uh, my wife is six foot two. Um, so you will all see her. Uh, she'll be one of the first people doing the, the top 10 list building with me. So maybe in the next month, uh, she'll be on. So look forward to that. Uh, but obviously I got a thing for tall women and God, what is her name? She's been in Guardians of the Galaxy and, uh, a bunch of stuff. The night manager, she was really good in that, but she's in it. Um, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, and then the woman that was the uh, black actress in Bad Times at the El Royale, I feel like that was the first movie I saw her in, and then she's in this, too. Uh, and she's really good in it. So that's sort of the crew. Um, Colin Farrell's in it. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. Like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think uh, critics were underwhelmed with Steve McQueen's work here because his other work has just been so stellar. Um, and then I watched Suspiria, the remake. I, it's been a long time since I've seen the original. The new one's very different in terms of style. It's intense, though, man. Like, there's one of the... It's one of the grossest, goriest scenes I've ever seen that does not have a drop of blood in it. Who... I mean, it was just stomach-turning, some of the stuff in this movie. But uh, it, it's really well-directed. It's maybe a little overlong. I feel like the same story could have been told in less than two and a half hours. Um, I got nothing wrong with long movies, but this one was a little overindulgent, but I did like it. Um, I mean, I, I give it a, a positive review. I'm not going to go on about it cause you can always watch the original. I, I want I, it's part of an original trilogy. Inferno is one of the movies in the, in the original trilogy. It's currently on Amazon prime, but Suspiria is not, and neither is the other. And I, I, I you'd think there would be a box set. I couldn't find one, so I'm going to have to buy them individually on Blu-ray. By the way, uh, if you buy Blu-rays on Amazon, there's a link in the description. Click it. It's a storefront that I built. Uh, it's not. I, I'm not selling the movies, but if you buy any of them in there, honestly, even if you just if you if you enter Amazon through that link and you buy blue jeans or whatever you get. Uh, it'll, I'll actually get a kickback, like a commission for sending you to Amazon. Even if you already have an account, it's literally just a matter of clicking that link and then buying whatever you buy on Amazon. Uh, but, but I did curate a bunch of like five to $10 Blu-ray deals. So if you're a Blu-ray buyer, go check it out. Um, a lot of people were wanting to, I was wearing a shirt with some embroidered skulls on it in the weird movies I did last week. And uh, people, ca I've got so many comments, people asking about it. I need to add that to the shop too. So go check that out. It's a good way to support the show without actually having to give up anything. Um, and then Velvet Buzzsaw, I watched. I think bef I think right after, um, right at, maybe right after recording last week's episode. I like it as a Netflix original. 
I was a little bit disappointed by it, but it's still a cool movie. Uh, it's kind of a horror type movie about <clears throat> the 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 art trade, and uh, this this artist work is found, and people that get involved with it and the selling of it specifically have some really horrible things happen to them. It could have been better, but I I applaud Netflix for putting stuff like this out. Um, I liked it. If you like my taste, you'll probably at least like it a little bit. Um, and then I don't know why I put this in my notes, but I'll go ahead and mention it. I've said it before. Dude, I think, because I watch a lot of movies with my son now. Um, and he, 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 I've said it before. He, it could be in my head, but I think he has good taste in movies. There have been times where we watch like an animated thing that just looked like it might be kind of good. That's not good. Like it just was kind of, ugh. And he just, he didn't say anything, but he'll get up and start playing. If I put in something that I think is good, maybe it's because I'm more actively watching it with him. But he, he'll sit there and watch the whole thing. So his favorite movies are uh, Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University. And I got to say, where, this is where I'm going with this. Even, even with The Incredibles 2 being as good as it was, I think Monsters University is possibly the best Pixar movie they've ever made. Now, I'm more partial like Toy Story because I was young when that came out. Um, so it's got nostalgic elements, and it is very, very good movie. But Monsters University is a really, really solid film. I think anybody could enjoy it. And for kids, it's got a really great message about working hard to be successful, um, you know, overcoming adversity. You know, it, it, it's it's and it's and it's entertaining. It's funny. Um, I really, really like it. It's one of the few kids' movies. I'm like. You know, anybody that has kids that's listening knows your kid has movies they want to watch over and over again. I, I home run getting my son to watch Monsters University because I'll sit and watch it with him almost any time. And I've seen it quite a few times. If you like this clip, definitely click the subscribe button and be sure to check out full podcast episodes. If you love movie conversations, I think you'll really dig the entire podcast. You can also check out some of these older clips as well as my main channel, my more popular channel, where I list out all of the best movies currently available on Netflix and other streaming services.